people ask me how I know how far I've gone in a day. I carry this, it's an Alpha, Garmin Alpha. It's from, uh, I bought it from W Supply, Hunting Supply. I track my dogs. I can also train my dogs with it. It's got a tone and then some electricity. You can shock them a little bit. It's got a trip computer on it. So I just go to the trip computer and I reset the trip. So the trip odometer goes down to nothing. And it's got all these, you know, the elevation and you can change a lot of this stuff. I reset that and I carry this. And then I can also check, if my dogs get out away from me, I can check and see where they're at. And then I carry it in this handy dandy leather deal. Uh, I'll put the name of the company that sent, they sent me this in a dog lead. And I've been meaning to, to, to give them credit for it. They wanted me to just try it out. And now I like it, it's real handy. You know, you put it in there and I tell you what, it latches down. You pull it over that little stub right there and snap it and it ain't going anywhere. I carry a pack saddle with me now so I can carry water. These, these hills I'm going to, I don't know where the water is and it's pretty, they're deserty. I've been wanting to come here for a long time and I haven't. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult to get to but it's not far from the house. So I like to take a pack of meal so I can carry water and then I can also carry just little extra things and make you know some coffee and some stuff like that and then also I can take a lot a little bit of this extra weight off the back of my mule and I like to take a pack mule I like the I don't know the romance of it one of these days boom I'm taking off and I'm just gonna keep on going for first time I'm only gonna go I'm go for about five or six days I'm gonna ride right out of the house and I'm gonna go and then if that works out and I kind of enjoy it, I'm going to take some other trips up into the higher country. And then I'm going to try to take a long ride. I'm going to try to. I'm getting kind of old. that down here in the flat country I'm not really worried about having a wreck I get up in rough stuff I can just pull this tail pop, 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 and I got it and then I can ride and I don't have to worry about if something happens to this mule she's gonna drag my mule off too should never tie hard and fast when you're packing but I do it out here because I got flat country from here to there I'm gonna go, oh boy, mules are feeling good this morning. Agnes really wanted to walk. I'm gonna go right up, right up on the other side of that mountain right there. I'm gonna go down and then come back around over the top and ride north as far as I have time. Look at this mule, she really wanted to go. She's confused. She thinks she's going to the trailer or she thinks she's going back home, something. But she's confused, I'll guarantee you that. But that's okay. I like them to walk out like that. I came up here about, oh, 1980 got to be about 85 a long time ago I came up here on a horse I, I called Huggy Hug Cat he's a pretty nice mountain horse and I brought a bunch of those stinking Airedales that I had I had a bunch of them things I inherited a kennel and at one time I had 25 of those things and I had read the book matter of fact I'll put a link to it called uh, Elliot Barker wrote it now he was up north in northern New Mexico and it was called when the dogs bark treed and he used some Airedales and part half Airedale and half a uh, half hound and he was a predator hunter and kind of the game manager on the uh, Vermejo ranch which is a beautiful ranch in northern New Mexico I think uh, I think Pennzoil owns it, 
and I don't know who owns it now. Maybe Ted Turner. I don't know. It's they call it the Boy Scout Ranch. Anyway, he hunted lions and he did the predator control up there, and he caught lions with those air, uh, an Airedale and some some half Airedales. And of course, I got my first Airedale when I was just a kid. I and mean, that was when my grandfather told me, said, yeah, they hunt bears with those dogs. And I just went, oh, you can hunt bears with dogs? And I thought, man, this is the greatest thing I've ever, ever heard of in my life. And so I got my first Airedale. And then I, later on, I had another Airedale. And then I inherited all these Airedales because the guy that was raising them, it was called the Caring Heart Dog Foundation. And he supposedly had a heart attack. Honestly, he was a con man. <laughs> he sold these dogs for a lot of money. And he called, I'd bought a dog from him and he called me and said, I'm gonna have to, I had a heart attack and I can't take care of these dogs. And, and, and as my dad would say, his politics weren't the same as the rest of ours. Homosexual. Not funny, ha ha, funny queer. Mm -hmm. he, he was probably gay, I guess. Cause he always had these Mexican guys from Mexico and he would come bring them over. He was an epidemiologist is what his training was in. That's the kind of doctor he was. We called him Dr. Barber. Anyway, he'd bring these guys over and he would Americanize them. He'd teach them how to speak English. He was a real smart dude. He'd teach them how to speak English and then, you know, make them dress properly. If you ever been down here in the Southwest, a lot of times you can tell uh, a Mexican from on the other side of the border just by the way he dresses uh, most of the time you can tell but he would bring them over here and Americanize them and he would work them they would you know clean house cook and take care of the dogs and he had and he had all these Airedales and he sold them it's called Caring Heart Dogs Foundation and he had this this deal where he would sell them and then if you bought a dog from him you always got free boarding and free grooming but the deal was he would they would ask for tips they say well you know you need to tip the boys well the tips were typically more than you would get for boarding i mean that stinking jacket wound up tighter than a nine day clock anyway i had bought a dog from him and he had good dogs he had imported them from africa and, and where else? Germany had a big dog named Bo, uh, Volkan that he imported from Germany. He was a good dog. And uh, Bogan was from South Africa. Big, large type Airedales weighed, you know, I think they probably, the, the males could go as high as 85, 90 pounds. And the females, you know, were probably 60, 65 pounds. Anyway, he called me, he said, I had a heart attack. I can't take care of these dogs. And my boys are leaving me and this and that he said would you take over the kennel and I had to think about it for a long time <laughs> and I said all right I'll take it over so here I inherited 25 Airedales all shapes and sizes and I converted my horse barn this was when I was married to my first wife too and they also groomed them for the and that was another deal they'd say oh we, you get free grooming uh, when you buy one of our dogs we just ask for tips well these most of the people who bought these dogs were really wealthy people and they would tip more than regular grooming would cost <laughs> so my ex-wife she learned how to groom and and I trained some dogs I even took on some off breeds and I trained them you know to heal and sit and come when they're called and not run through the door when you open the door to wait you know just some basic stuff nothing high-end just just enough so these people could handle their dogs anyway first thing I thought when I got all these Airedales I said man I want to hunt them so I started bringing them out to hunt them and I you know they were all I tried buying the scents from from uh, out of the back of full cry I bought the bear scent and I had some dogs that would trail and stuff but Shoot, I, I even went up to where I used to live off grid. I took them up there and then I lost a female dog right up here where I'm at right now. I rode Huggy, my horse, and I brought Jen and a bunch of Airedales and I came out here and I lost Jen for two weeks. Came home from work one day and walked out in the yard and there was Jen laying in the yard right there in the, she had lost a little bit of weight, but she, other than that, she was okay. 
and she was laying right in the front yard. I thought, Dad gum, this is a long ways from from where I used to live. But she made it home. They were smart. They weren't as uh they I mean they had a good nose, but they weren't as inclined to trail as these hounds are. And you need something in this country that really, really, really wants to trail. Because the trailing conditions are 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 terrible at best. But yeah, that's the story of my Airedales. And I kept them. I love my Airedales. And I had that big one from Germany. I called him Volkan. He traveled with me for years because I worked out of town. And uh, I used to trim him and, and I, we'd groom him and I'd groom him with a mohawk. And he was an impressive looking dog now. He was 85 pounds and solid muscle and as obedient as a, as a border collie or a poodle or a German shepherd. And... I traveled all over the country with that dog when I was working, you know, and, and when I was doing that kind of work, I worked on uh, gas lines, master meter systems that were, you know, they buy gas from a, a supplier in a, an apartment complex or something or a mobile home park. They, they sell the gas back to the, to the customer. They buy it and then resell it. Anyway, yeah, me and Volcan, we put on lots of miles. I used to go sleep on, I'd, I'd get tired, you know, and because I, I was driving so much and I'd pull up on a rest area and sleep on a on a picnic table and I could just lay my bag down on that table and Volcan would would he would lay down right by, by me and anybody come by he wasn't he didn't have a mean bone in his body I don't think I mean he was he was impressive looking and, and intimidating but uh he would just sit there and, and, and if they walked by me he had this real low growl like that. Now I could sleep in peace and never worry about anybody bothering me or anything. But he died at the farm. That was the last Airedale I had. And I was real attached to him. And they had come and gone at a period in my life when when I was going through a lot of turmoil with a divorce and everything. I had little kids and everything. And one of these days I'd like to get another one, but I just haven't been able to, to, just to break. I got all these hounds, and and they make good pets too. I just don't, I don't take them in the house and stuff. And don't keep them with me all the time like I do with my Airedales. You know the Airedales, you never had to worry much about them getting off on a track and, and leaving the country. These hounds, you never know. <laughs> Speak of the devil. <laughs> There's old Jack. <laughs> I got to get them wore down a little bit. It's been a week. I've been working. How does a guy balance work and hunting these hounds? I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit working. Well, this is sugar. <laughs> She's running with the big dogs today. Kind of. Oh, sorry, Agnes. She's kind of being bashful. I'm gonna try to go, I gotta go right up through that gap right up there. And then I gotta get on top and make a left and go around. I had to get off my mule because I had to cut across up there. This thing kind of bluffed out in that slick rock. And what it is, it's a hard rock underneath with a little shell rock on top. And I don't care what anybody says, I've had my mules fall down in that stuff before. And I don't take any chances. That kind of stuff like that. See, it's got a hard shell underneath and then it's got that loose rock on top. And I had the side hill back there. I didn't video it, I probably should have. But I had the side hill on it Guarantee you, that's where they fall down. Because I've had it happen. Did you find a deer leg? Are you proud of that? You are. <laughs> proud of that deer leg. It's a pretty good climb. These mules blow for a minute. I'm going to go right out. Right out the top through there. And then turn left.
always wonder who stacks those rocks up like that. I mean, this, I know. Oh, Agnes, easy girl. I know that, you know, when you're out in the forest and the trails, they mark a lot of the trails with uh, what they call cairns, cairns, C-A-I-R-N, I believe. And so they make these little pyramids of rocks to mark the trail. But you'll be out here in the middle of nowhere so there's no trail here. This is just a dry arroyo. And somebody stacked those rocks right there. For some reason. What does it mean? Does anybody know? Never seen so many doves either. Every single one of these little canyons that I've been in are just loaded with doves. I mean, like, there's three, but I mean, sometimes 30, 40 of them jump up. You know when they make there, they, there goes three, four, five. And they make that thing with their, with their uh, wings when they fly. Honey, I'm home. Look at this old place. Still got those old steel window frames. Look at that. There's a little hole right up there to shoot your gun out of. Place in there with a mantle, man. I think it was a regular mansion, wasn't it? Look at that. Oh, they did that just here lately. Big wide door on this side, little skinny door on the other side. Look at those old metal metal window frames. Trash. Old barrels. Wonder what they did here. I'm always curious about stuff like that. into the fireplace. Pretty cool stuff. Fourteen point six two miles. Eight hours and thirty six minutes. It's four fifteen right now. Elevation here is four thousand four hundred and sixty feet. What do you say? It's a good day. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm kind of out of shape for doing this. You guys want in? All right. <laughs> 